Are your detail page changes not sticking? Have you made a change to the back end description or title and it doesn't reflect on the front end? I will investigate why for you and give you some tips and tricks. My name is Stephen Pope and this is my Amazon guy. So let's say we wanted to change the title of this product and currently it says happy birthday stemless wine glass. Well, um, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. First, Amazon sometimes locks down attributes and it can be difficult to get those changes to go through. Uh, whenever you run into that scenario, often, ca often the case, the best way to make the change is to submit a ticket. And those ticketing um, can be easily demonstrated on today's video. Uh, additionally, another common factor is that you have multiple sellers submitting data. So if you have uh, uh, more than two people selling the same item, whenever that data is submitted to the Amazon catalog, it can be conflicting in nature. So I might be calling this the happy birthday stemless wine glass. Somebody else might be calling it the stemless glass with the happy birthday design. And so when, when that occurs, Amazon's going to take a hierarchy of data needs. They're going to say, hey, who was first to list this item? They're going to be at the top of that list. Now, the only thing that trumps that top of the list is if the Amazon catalog team has specifically reviewed the listing and have locked it. They go one tier higher. And there's nothing you can do about that, especially if anybody from the vendor central team has listed that item. That data is going to be uh, very difficult to change. You will have to submit a ticket to get it changed. Uh, but if you're the first seller, you're, you're highest in the tier. Below that is the brand registered um, sellers. And you might be surprised to hear that I said that the first time lister will be above brand registry. That is true from our experience, despite what you might find in the help files. And then below that is uh, a, a seller who is second to the listing who doesn't have brand registry. And it's basically a free game from there. So <clears throat> that is the hierarchy of data complexity with Amazon as, as you submit multiple things. Uh, to add to that complication, when you're on the back end, let's say you've got multiple SKUs for the same ASIN. Um, in my last video, I just demonstrated why you'd want to have a duplicate SKU. Check out that video on having multiple fulfillment methods. But, but one thing I, I wanted to cover in this video is... If you have duplicate SKUs and you want to make a data change, you got to change it in both SKUs. So if you come in and hit edit on this listing and you wanted to make the change here, you need to make that same change on that duplicate listing or you need to have the other listing be blank. And I'm going to demonstrate that here. So here you can see we've got all this description, key product features, etc., all filled in. And then I'm going to hit edit on the second one. And here I have not filled this in. It's blank. So if I make a change to this one, I do not need to make a change here because this one's blank. This one's going to trump that data. But let's say I had copied this over to this other um, SKU and then I later wanted to make a change. If data is present on both SKUs, you need to make the change on both SKUs. Um, and additionally, if you're, if you're having trouble getting the detail page change to occur and one is blank and the other's not, chances are you should still go ahead and duplicate the information over to this one and get that changed. So that is a very common scenario that people do not understand that when you have duplicate SKUs, you need to change the data in both locations, especially if you can't get the detail page um, changed to reflect on the front end. Finally, um, I'm gonna walk you through on how to file a ticket to get a detail page change. In the top right, click on help, scroll down to hit get support, hit selling on Amazon, and then they just recently changed this UI. So now you click on products, listing, and inventory, fix a product page. Grab that ASIN and type it in here. Now, one of the things that we've commonly seen is that when you try and do this, uh, especially if you've got multiple SKUs here, notice this here, uh, they'll tell you, hey, you've got brand registry, just go in there and make the change yourself on the back end. And sometimes you go and do that, especially if the title has been locked down, it's in red, uh, that gives you an error, you get kind of this roundabout where they're like, uh, they won't let you make the change on the back ends and you can't submit a ticket to fix it because they say, go change it on the back end. That is a very common uh, circular logic problem with Amazon. It's one of the most frustrating things for us as an agency at My Amazon Guy, as well as for our clients. Um, to get around that, just create a ticket where you're not hitting the fix the product page issue and you're just hitting investigate other product inventory issues 
put the ASIN in there, a link to your manufactured website if you have one, and tell them the change you want. That's how you get around that bug. Otherwise, if you don't have that bug, just come in here and submit title. Hey, I want to make this change. Hit next. And uh, okay, so here you go. You can update it from your inventory page by navigating to the vital info. So they're not allowing me to submit the ticket here. And let's say that when I was in this section, it wasn't going to let me make the change, right? So if, if you run into that scenario, come over here and just hit investigate other product issues and inventory issues, type in the ASIN. My, uh, I want to update title from XYZ to ABC, link to my website, or instead of calling it web, your website, call it manufacturer website, and post the URL. And if you do this, uh, you should get that change within the next 24 hours. If they come back and deny it, it's because you're breaking some sort of catalog policy, which can be common if like, you know, you don't put the brand name at the front of your, your title or anything like that. So you might have to go back and, and fluctuate that. Also, you might run into issues where your, your, uh, your title count might be too long. We've seen, we've seen them start cracking down on 200 characters down to 50 in some categories, and that's kind of a new development as well. All right, so if you run into any problems or challenges you can't overcome and this video didn't cover it, leave a comment on this video. We'll shoot a video to um, address that additional concern or need. Um, or if you need some Amazon consulting, go right over to myamazonguy.com and contact us today, and we'll be happy to address any of your questions, um, as well as help you run Amazon ads or A-plus content or manage your catalog, all those good things. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy.